What's going on guys, in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create stuff like this. Yes, today's tutorial we're going to be talking about how to do stylized compositing within Blender. So we're not even going to leave Blender and it's going to be sensational. Why am I on fire you ask? Well because you know this tutorial is going to be flames. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Blender and before we get started there's a few things we need to set up. Number one, we need to enable Node Wrangler. So go to Edit, Preferences, add-ons and then type in node wrangler this is going to be very important for our stylized compositing very very important so enable node wrangler and then press x next we're going to need to enable all of the render passes that we're going to need for our stylized composite so on the right hand side here go down until you find view layer properties once you find view layer properties make sure you enable all of these passes so combined z pass miss pass normal and all of the light passes, so that's diffuse, glossy, transmission, and other. This is very important. Make sure you enable these passes. And if you're an EV, no problem. Go down to the view properties and enable these passes, the combined, the Z, the mist, the normal, and again, all of the light passes. You don't necessarily need to worry about the volume, but worry about all of the light passes. Okay, once you've done that, I'll wait. Welcome back. Next, we're going to need to go to the compositing tab. Next, all you need to do is press F12 and render your image. Or go to render, render image or animation. Perfect. Next, we need to go into the compositing tab. So, so go all the way to the top and click onto the compositing tab. If you have my startup file, link in the description for my Gumroad, then your compositing window will look like this. If not, however, I'm going to show you exactly how to set it up. For those who have my startup file, go to the next chapter in the timestamp. Okay, so for those who don't have my startup file, your blender will probably look like this, which means when you go to your compositing tab at the top, it looks like this. And you might be thinking, what kind of craziness? Don't worry about that. I'm going to show you how to set it up. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click just on this ledge here. So I'm going to right click and it's going to say area options. I'm going to click horizontal split. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to drag it halfway down and then click. It's going to give us a new window here. Then I'm going to press this, this button here, change the editor type, and I'm going to change it to an image editor. Then I'm going to go to the right hand side to this ledge here, right click, go to vertical split. And we're going to do the exact same thing, but put it in the middle this time. Now we have two windows here, as you can see. Now what we're going to do is going to click this. I'm going to use this as the render result. And on the right hand side, we're going to click this and change this to the viewer node. Next, we're going to click this ledge at the bottom here right click and press join areas and we're going to make sure the area is pointing down and then click and now we have a big compositing tab right here and on the left hand side you should be able to see your rendered image and the right hand side we're going to show you your composited result perfect backdrop should be enabled by default so if this is not enabled make sure you click onto it now you might be wondering why can't we see anything we've just rendered out a tab because right here it should show you your viewer note so what you need to do is press use nodes this is important click use nodes and bang you should now see your render image on the left hand side and also a node here which has all of the passes you've enabled so if you look it should say all of the passes you've enabled so there's the combined there's the depth there's the shadow there's amber inclusion normal mist emission environment diffuse direct indirect color glossy direct indirect you name it it should have all of the passes which you've enabled earlier right here Next, what we're going to need to do is press Control, Shift, and left mouse click onto the node of all of the passes. So Control, Shift, and left mouse click, and bang. You should see your viewer node result not only in the workspace, which is why we enabled backdrop, but also in the top right corner here where it says viewer node. Again, you can scroll using the mouse wheel. You can scroll in and out so you can get closer or further away from your image. Now to cycle through your passes, hold down control shift and then click onto your viewer node again and once more and if you keep clicking you'll be able to see you're cycling through all of your render passes that you've just saved which is absolutely crazy this is perfect this is what we're going to need in order to create our stylized compositing really if you wanted to say for example you liked this this pass this render pass you wanted to save this as an image no problem all you need to do is go to the viewer node window here go to image save as and then you can save out your image but that's not what we're going to be doing right now what we're going to be doing is doing our stylized composites so how could we do stylized composites no problem I'm about to show you 
So for the main stylus composite, which I showed you earlier, we normally generally use just two of the passes. And the passes we're going to use generally are going to be the depth pass or the miss pass and the emission pass. So what we need to do is go back to our render node here with all of our composites in it, with all of our render passes, and then cycle until you get to your miss pass. So again, control shift click until you get to your miss pass. Your miss pass should look like this. If it looks like this, such as the depth pass, if it looks like this, all you need to do is click shift A. It's gonna open a new window, then type in normalize. And what this is gonna do is gonna normalize all of the values for you. So again, if your depth pass or your myth pass looks like this and you can't see anything, all you need to do is type in normalize, shift A, type in normalize and put the normalize node in between the mist or the depth node and the viewer node and it should normalize all of the values for you. Luckily for me, my mist pass doesn't need it, but I'm gonna put it in there anyway. The next thing we're gonna do is click shift A and then type in color ramp and we're gonna put a color ramp after the normalize node, bang. Lastly, what we're gonna do is press control and the add button. So control and then find the add button on your keyboard and it's gonna create an add node for you. Now this is gonna be very, very important. This is why we enabled Node Wrangler to begin with. So we can do shortcuts like this as well as cycle through our render passes. So let's take a look at what we have so far. We have our mist or our depth pass plugged into our normalize, which is then going into a color ramp, which is then going into an add node. Right now you'll see that it looks quite white and that's because we have one of our passes going into our add node, but the bottom is literally just white. So what do we do? We next go to our next pass, which is, if you remember, the emission pass. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my emission and I'm gonna plug that into the bottom of our add node. And then straight away, you'll be able to see we have this, which already looks impressive. We're already pretty much halfway in to the stylus compositing. But right now you might be wondering, yeah, that looks great, but it's not really glowing. So how do we do that? No problem, I'm gonna show you. So all you need to do, Click anywhere in your compositing tab and type in shift A and then type in glare, right glare and add the glare node in between the emission pass and the add shader. So click onto it, bang. And you can see we already have some sort of glow, but that's not the glow that we want. We kind of want a natural glow, like if it was in Eevee. So go down to where it says streaks, click onto that and change that to fog glow. Then we're going to change the type from medium to high and that gives you more of a natural glow. If you want to make the glow bigger, just increase the size and bring it up to mine. If you want to make the glow less noticeable, all you need to do is bring down the size. I think eight seems to be fine. And so far so good, we have this image and it looks pretty good so far. But if you remember, it doesn't quite look like the image we had earlier. Why is that? Well, that's because we're going to use the color ramp and we're going to add a tint to the image. So in the color ramp, you should see two values, one black and one white. What we're going to do is we're going to click onto the white value and then we're going to click onto the white color at the bottom here. Here we're going to change the color to any color that you want that you might think may suit the scene. So for me, I think a blue is going to suit the scene pretty well. So I'm going to click onto some sort of blue color and luckily it's going to update in real time. There we go. And we have that. And this already looks very impressive to me. And just like that, we have a very nice stylized composited image within Blender. And this is just using two passes, the miss pass and the emission pass. If I wanted to save this image out, I'll just go to the viewer nodes on the right hand side here, click image, save as, and I can save out that image. But we're not done here. No, we're not done. This is not the end of the video. There's a few more things you can do. So now that we have this node set up, what we could do is we could use any of the other passes. So go to your node of all of your passes, click control shift and click onto the node until you find any passes that you think might look cool. So for me straight away, I can see the shadow pass might look cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug the shadow pass into the color ramp. And then I'm gonna go back to the add shader and click control shift click so we can see the result on the add shader. Bang, just like that, we have another look, another stylized look, which looks just as good, to be fair. It doesn't look as cartoony or like a manga drawing, but this looks pretty impressive also. What I might do, however, is I might change the color to maybe something extreme like a red and see what that looks like. It might look super crazy, but let's give it a go. There we go, <laughs> that looks interesting. So you can get different looks, literally by just plugging in 
different render passes into the color ramp. Or you can do something completely different and add completely different methods. Just play around with the nodes, see what you can and cannot do. Again, this is not exclusive to just cycles. You can do this in Eevee. So if I delete this render pass, I actually have an EXR file, which is from a, an Eevee render. So I'm just going to show you real quick. I'm going to change this to view layer. Okay, so this is the Eevee pass. It looks crazy because I don't have the textures, but it's fine. I'm going to go down. I'm going to click Control Shift and click onto it to find the passes that I want. Yep, the mist pass looks great. Plug the mist pass into the color ramp. Plug the color ramp into an add shader. Plug the emission pass into the glare node. Plug the glare node into the add shader. Control shift click onto the add node. And bang, we have this. And this looks pretty impressive. And bear in mind, this is an EV pass. This is an EV render with EV passes. As you can see, we have all of the EV passes. So if you didn't want to waste time doing a cycles render, for example, as you can see, the, the beginning image looks crazy. That looks crazy. <laughs> I mean, the reason why it looks crazy is because our character here doesn't have textures because I lost the file, but you don't even need to render this in the high samples if you wanted to. You could use a relatively low sample count if you know at the end of it, you're going to be compositing and stuff like this. And this doesn't work for just images. This works for renders. This is literally one of my biggest secrets to creating some of the most insane renders and insane animations in this particular style. So if this was really helpful for you, then please, please, please don't subscribe. Don't do it. Just let me know in the comments below. And go to my Patreon if you think it's cool. And share the video. But yeah, guys, that's literally how to do relatively simple stylized compositing within Blender with only a few nodes. Bear in mind, only a few nodes. And if you know nothing about Blender, this tutorial shouldn't have been too crazy for you. Um, but hopefully it was okay. Oh, I didn't plug the normal eyes into uh, the mists. That's my mistake. I should have plugged the normal eyes into here, but it was fine anyway. Still got a good result. Again, if you want to get specific looks, all you need to do is just cycle through it. You might find something you like. Like, look at this. This shadow pass looks kind of crazy. No matter. Let me just plug that in. Let me plug it in, see what it looks like. Does it look any good? No, it looks kind of trash. Same time, maybe it could be usable, maybe not. Maybe we could use something else. Let's look through it. Ambient occlusion, why not plug that in? See the result. Yeah, not bad. Maybe I'll, leave, I'll probably leave that to white, to be honest. I'll probably leave it to be white and then have the emission on the back. Yeah, and that just looks, yeah, that looks interesting. It would do. Cycle through, anything else? Anything else? What's that glossy color? Yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, that looks crazy. Anyway, guys, you get the point. If you found this video useful, please share, subscribe, comment, and like. Don't subscribe, but comment and like. Follow my Patreon if you're interested. Share the video if you found it useful. And I'll see you on the next tutorial. Peace.